everyone. Welcome back to Health and Wellness in the Garden. I hope you're staying cool in these hot days of summer. Today I'm going to share with you a little bit about using flowers from the garden and using that in your cooking, for your teas, for all for when you're making desserts, all the different ways that you can use different edible flowers. And I have some links that you can check out too that tell you about some of the health benefits of using the flowers in your food. But before we get started, there's a few things that I want to mention about when you are using flowers. You want to make sure that, of course, that they're not poisonous. So not all flowers, just because they grow in your garden, does not mean that you're able to consume them. They're not for human consumption. So you want to make sure that, first of all, that they're not going to be poisonous, that you're not going to have any allergic reactions to them. You know, some people, they can tolerate some types of flowers and others can't. So you want to make sure that when you are using them, that you, someone who doesn't have a lot of allergies to certain types of flowers, you want to avoid those types of things. So you want to make sure that they're not poisonous and that they're edible. You want to make sure that they're grown for human consumption and also that if there are pesticides that are used, that there are pesticides that are used for items that are going to be consumed by humans. Sometimes pesticides are used on things that we wouldn't normally be consuming, so you want to make sure that you are not consuming those types of, like, you know, you think of uh, dandelion. That's one thing that a lot of people think of when they think of eating flowers, but you want to make sure that you're not picking those dandelions or using the greens or using the flowers that have been sprayed by those things that are not for us to consume. You want to make sure that you harvest the flowers at their peak. So you want to make sure when they're blooming and usually if you're going to harvest them from your garden, you want to do it early in the morning. So once the dew dries and they're still uh, just opening and they're fresh and they haven't wilted yet from the heat of the day, that's the best time to pick them. You want to make sure also that the flowers have not been treated recently with any type of animal manure. You don't want to get any pathogens or any fungus or anything like that from wild time. You know, if you do are using animal manure and then if you water it, if that, that water from the soil splashes up on your flowers, then you want to make sure that you're not using that. So if you're using any type of animal manure uh, recently, you want to make sure that you don't harvest those types of flowers to use in your foods. You also want to be careful that flowers that you get from a florist or from a garden center aren't necessarily for you to consume. They're not necessarily edible. So you want to make sure that you are getting things that are grown, the flowers are grown for people to eat. And of course you want to not, you know, don't pick things that are just in the dishes on the roadside, that type of thing either, because you don't know what they've been sprayed with. So you want to, <clears throat> when you're using the flowers, you want to make sure that you are being safe and that you are following the precautions so that you don't get any allergic reactions or you don't get sick from them. Okay, so how can you use different flowers? You, <clears throat> excuse me, you can use them in salads, you can fry them up in butter, some olive oil, you can use them in stir fry, you can stuff them. We're going to talk about, of course a lot of people are familiar with the squash flowers and how you can stuff those. You can um, mince them up and add them to herb butters, you can add them to um, you can use things like rose petals and stuff like that for jams and jellies, for also for different desserts. For um, and then of course just mixing them up into salads or uh, putting them on as a garnish on top of any type of food item that you're making. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that are available and what the flavors might be. Uh, all the information that I have that I'm using and that I use, I usually make sure that I get it from. Uh, one of the extension services, the cooperative extension services through the university so that I know that it's been tested, I know that it's safe. So this list uh, comes from one of the handouts that I got from one of the extension services so that talks about that these are things that have been that are edible, that people have used them throughout history. You know, flowers have been used in foods for many generations. Uh, lots of different type, parts of the world use different flowers that grow in their area for their foods. And so there are certain things that perhaps we're not used to using that don't normally grow here that we don't use, but in different parts of the world that those are readily, readily available and so they're used in lots of different ways. So some of the things if you want to add some citrus tones to your foods, some of the things you can use are begonia flowers, you can use cilantro flowers. Uh, I picked some cilantro flowers here. So, you know, of course this is uh, when you think of cilantro, you know, a lot of times the greens part is called cilantro and then once the seed portion of it, then 
uh, is called coriander. So I pick some cilantro flowers and so you can just use these top part. And again, like I said, you can just pick them off and you could toss them in a salad. You can add them in uh, with rice, with cooking. It's just a really nice uh, little garnish that you can put on that. And that adds a little citrusy flavor to your food. So cilantro is one of the ones that does. Um, hibiscus is another one that also you can use and that adds kind of a citrusy flavor. Now one thing that I want to mention that when you are using uh, flowers, you want to, a lot of times, you want to remove the pollen, so remove the stamens and remove that portion in the middle that's a lot of times going to be bitter and people can have allergic reaction to the dusty pollen. And then also a lot of times you want to only use the petal part, so if it has any sepals or anything like that, you want to peel those off and not use that and just use the petal portion of it. So hibiscus is one that offers um, it's, it's really pretty and a lot of times you'll see it in salads, you'll see it um, in stir fries and that type of thing and that's a really good one to add some citrus tones to your to your foods. Uh, bee balm is another one and so if you have some bee balm growing, there's lots of different kinds of bee balm and bee balm flowers are another one that add kind of a citrus tone uh, so if you're wanting that type of flavor that's another good one that you can use and again you know you want to make sure that this is something that you've grown uh, for human consumption for edible purposes. Now, if you want to add some, make it something kind of spicy, some of the things that you can use are arugula flowers. You know, when the days get hot, like arugula, of course, is, uh, grows well when it's, you start it earlier in the, kind of, in the cooler days, and then once it gets hot, a lot of times it'll bolt and it will go to flower. And so those flowers, so when a lot of these things that I'm going to talk about, you know, when it starts getting hot and they bolt and they go to flower, then you're like, oh gosh, now it's not making the fruit or the vegetable. And so uh, what to do now? Well, you can use the flowers. And so arugula is one of those. So arugula, radish, I uh, had some radish flowers too. Um, those also too are very good. You can add to different things and they'll add a little space to it. So arugula, radish, uh, the broccoli flower. So you know, because it's gotten hot, like I said, a lot of the broccoli rapini and those types of things have gone to flower already. And you see here, you know, you can see some of the, how it started, the broccoli was growing and then, of course, it went to flower. So, but you can use the flower portion of it. So what I do is I'll just pick some of this and it's already gone to flower, just chop it off and then take this and just chop it up and then you can throw it in a stir fry, you can throw it in a pasta salad uh, and that works really well. So I love to use use those broccoli flowers or the, from rapini or uh, broccolini or whatever you have like that. Uh, cauliflower flowers is another one that also adds a little spice to it. Uh, marigolds and oregano flowers. I have some oregano flowers here I picked as well and you see they're you know, they're really pretty and um, you know if you just even like if you take the flower petals and just smell them you can smell that they take they smell just like the herb they smell like the oregano so you know and also like with the cilantro and so it adds that flavor so, uh, sometimes the flavor is milder so you can add more of it to it add more of it to your food item and so you get that kind of that you know the, the pretty the pretty colors and then you also get the flavor of it as well and you have to worry about it being too strong nasturtium is another one and so um, borage and nasturtium you, a lot of times you grow with tomatoes and so those are herbs that you can also or flowers that you can also then pair with your tomatoes when your tomatoes are ready to harvest um, savory is another one too that uh, can add a little spice to your foods and so that you can use the flowers from that as well if you're looking for something sweet or minty, some of the things that you might want to use, um, chamomile, of course, I've mentioned chamomile before, and you know the flower, a lot of times people are familiar with it, you use for the teas, but you can also use it in garnishes, and you can also, you know, a lot of these flowers, you can add to salads, you can add to your dishes, but mainly, mainly it's for a garnish to, uh, it's kind of the appeal of it as well, as a, as a, in addition to the health benefits of it. Young dandelion, so, when the flower is still very small and young. And again, you wanna make sure that it hasn't been sprayed with any pesticides or has any residue on it that is not gonna be good for consumption. Dianthus, elderberry, fennel flowers are also very good. Those also kind of have a sweet, um, you know, fennel has that licorice taste and so you kind of get that with the flower as well. 
uh, honeysuckle, lavender. A lot of people are familiar with lavender. Uh, people use lavender in, you know, when they, like, you might have heard of lavender cookies. You might have heard of um, lavender jams or jellies. And so uh, those are really good if you want something sweet or kind of a minty taste. Um, linden flower, oh, the okra flower. The okra flower, you're not gonna get a lot of flavor from, but it's actually really pretty, the yellow, and so that's something that you can add. You can use it as a garnish. Um, but again, you wanna make sure, that even if you're only using it for garnish, you only put things on your plate or in your foods that are edible. Pineapple sage flowers are another really good one that you can use that kind of have that minty flavor that you could chop up and toss into salads. You can add to, uh, if you wanted to, like put on different types of uh, like a f like fruit, cut up fruit, that kind of thing. And then of course rose too. Uh, you know, roses, a lot of times you'll see those, the petals tossed into on desserts. You'll sometimes see them tossed on salads. Of course you can do teas with those as well. Same thing with the lavender, uh, the lemon balm. Uh, this is some lemon balm flowers. Um, I don't know if you can see those, the little, the little white lemon balm flowers on those as well. So these are all different things that you can make, make teas of, with all the different, uh, the ones that are minty or kind of, kind of sweet. I want to talk a little bit about the chive flower. That's a, I love to use the chive flower. Of course, now if you've cut your chive back, uh, a lot of them maybe they're done flowering, and but the chive flower I really like to use is that I'll take it and then mix it in with like an herb butter. So you could use a variety of different herbs. You could use the dill flower, and let me show you here. Like the dill flower here, a lot of you are familiar with. Of course, I love to use this. This is great to mix in with your pickles, and like if you're just making refrigerator pickles, or if you're just making quick pickles, uh, using the, the pretty dill flowers. But if you use the dill and use the chive, Flowers. You can use the garlic flowers also and just chop those up and mix them with the soft butter and that makes a really, really pretty flavorful herb butter that you can use. So that is a really good one to use. I've talked about mustard before and uh, of course my mustard is going to seed now so the mustard flower is this yellow and that also will kind of bring you that, that hot mustardy flavor and that is really good if you want to kind of mix in with some like the sour cream or if you want to mix in with some cream cheese for kind of a spread. Uh, the mustard seed is really good for that. So a lot of these you can mix in with the cream cheese or mix in with the sour cream or with yogurt and make a variety of different dips. All these types of flowers I'm talking about, the oregano flowers, the chive, the dill, the mustard, uh, the garlic, all of those things make a really nice, make, make, make a really nice dip for a variety of things. I want to talk a little bit about, oh, sunflower is another one that can be used uh, you'll, for a variety of different things. I just have that here for you. I want to talk a little bit about the squash flowers. So many of you are probably familiar with using squash flowers. Uh, you see those a lot of times. And so again, you know, when you when you are using this, you want to make sure that um, first of all, you want to make sure that there's no insects inside because a lot of times they'll be. You'll see some insects in there, like, and of course, we have some insects inside of ours. So you want to make sure that you clean those out, and you want to remove, like I said, any of the pollen that might be in there, and you want to make sure that you, you know, brush it off so you don't have any, have any of the, the debris that's in there. And then you want to make sure that any of this, the bottom part of it here, you kind of peel off or pinch off, because sometimes that can be bitter. And then the squash flower is really good. You can stuff it with kind of an herb, like an herb and cheese mix. You know, you can use, again, you can use all the herbs that we have from the garden and then bread it or lightly batter it and then saute it up. And that is really good. So squash flower is a very common one that people are familiar with using. Uh, one that you might not be so familiar with are daylilies. And um, again, I p had picked these earlier, but with all the flowers, you wanna make sure that you pick them when they're at their peak and when it's earlier in the day so that and then you use them right away you know a lot of these um, like we talked I said I mentioned borage is one that a lot of times people like to use along with the nasturtiums uh, I had picked a few of these and you know you want to make sure you clean them up and then just make sure you kind of pat them and then you can if there's something that is like this you can just put like in a vase and some water and keep it in a cool place 
uh, something like this, put in some paper towels and put it in a perhaps a little ziplock or a little container and use them in the refrigerator. But if you can use them that day, that's probably best. But those are always so much better if you use them the day that you picked them and preferably soon after you picked them. So, so those are some of the things that you can use. And you know, I wanna make sure, oh, one other one I wanna mention too, I almost forgot to mention was um, the jasmine I have here. And I have this jasmine, and you know, uh, you, a lot of you probably are familiar with jasmine tea, and you can use jasmine also, you know, it's very fragrant. You can also use it for different desserts and that type of thing. But when you use jasmine, you wanna make sure that it's the true jasmine. So there are flowers that are called jasmine, but they're not a true jasmine, and those are not for human consumption. So you wanna make sure that you have uh, the jasmine that is a true jasmine and you know of course it's very fragrant and you can you know a lot of times people like to use uh, those violets and jasmine and uh, a lot of those violas those types of things on desserts cakes and those types of things so they add that little extra little extra something and then also make it really pretty as well so I hope that I inspired you to go in the garden and check out what is flowering and you know things that like I said that have already gone to flower that you're like oh, okay now I'm done with this I'm not going to be able to harvest this anymore but you can still harvest the flowers and you can still get that flavor and the nutrients and the benefits of that plant through the flowers but again you want to make sure you use these things in moderation make sure that you're not allergic to them try them and test them and see how it works for you make sure that you are if you have any questions that you contact your uh, you contact the extension service and like I said they usually have a lot of good guides as far as what you can use and in the quantities and in, in different ways that you can use it as well please check out some of the links that I'm sharing with you here today that will contain some more information about some of the things that I've talked about some of the flowers and hope you enjoy thanks for watching